to the regularly scheduled town council meeting for the month of December, 12th month of the year. Looks like we're going to make it through 16 in pretty good shape. Uh, our artist is here tonight to help verify that for us. So uh, if you would, we'll follow our agenda. And now please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by an invocation offered by Councilman Biggs. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Eternal Father, we thank you so much for this day, Father, and we just thank you for all your blessings upon this town, this county, this region, this state, this nation, Father, and we just ask you now that, that you will be with this, this country, that you will be with the new leadership, not only with the country, but also with the state. And we pray your blessings on the United States. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Before we get further into the agenda, a um, couple of items. Um, first of all, uh, for the first time this evening, we have in our presence our new Director of Public Works, Mr. Uh, Stephen Horvath. Steve, welcome to Edenton. Welcome to the employment of the town and the leadership of our Public Works Department. We wish you the best and uh, look forward to having you with us for a long time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. Um, secondly, of course, um, on behalf of the town council and the community of Edenton, uh, who's not already behind them, I'd like to offer a big hoorah out to the Edenton Aces for the, winning the Eastern Championship in the uh, football playoffs this past Friday evening down in Tabor City. Uh, the team travels to Winston-Salem on Saturday for the championship game against Reedsville and the community I'm sure will turn out in mass to wish them well as they depart here Saturday morning. Um, and finally, uh, the same weekend the town of Edenton uh, engaged itself in the Christmas candlelight tour once again and uh, we would like to offer our thanks and appreciation to all of the volunteers who helped put that on including our employees and, and the fine work they did to make Edenton look very festive for the occasion. Um, saw an email today where nearly 2,000 tickets were sold for that event so that's in the top three for that event. Um, for the Christmas candlelight tour and we're all very happy about that. And again, thank you for all of, to all of you all who helped make it happen. Mayor, if I could add one thing to that, please, sir. Sure. If I'm not bad mistaken, I hope I'm not stepping that too far on a limb here. The last time that the Aces did this, I think one of our council members was either on the team or he might have been on the JV team. <laughs> I'm not sure, so uh, tell you it might have been a little while ago. I, I, I wasn't that young. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the team. Mom was Councilman Dixon's brother. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. Wow. yeah, we were on the team, yeah. Nice. Band, I, I thought I remembered that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I hope... Um, that was in 1930, what? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> 69. <laughs> 1969, okay. Um, back to the agenda, if you would. Uh, the chair would entertain approval of the minutes for October 11, November the 8th, and a special meeting that we held on November 28th. Second. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any further comment, questions, additions, or changes to the minutes as presented? Hearing none, all in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed, no. Thank you very much. Um, as I mentioned in my opening comments, uh, we will have an audit review this evening. Jim Winston from his firm, uh, who's been 
working with the town of Edenton for several years now, uh, is ready to present the findings of his team relative to our financial uh, position and condition. So, uh, Jim, if you would, we'll turn the floor over to you. All right, it's good to be here. Uh, I always enjoy coming down here. I'm going to get a good meal when I get here, when I get through. <laughs> but uh, uh, I'm going to step around just a little bit so I can see. Uh, go to the next slide, if you would. Uh, the town of Edenton received an unmodified opinion for June 30, 2016. That's the only thing you want. want. It's a call of, the same thing as that we call a clean opinion. So that's exactly what we wanted to have. We're going to see some impact of the new police station on these numbers here, particularly on the, on the uh, at balance sheet side. We had total assets of 18 million nine ten last year. We got 22 million oh one oh nine eight thirty one. We got two plus million dollars in cash that's related to the to the new police station. It's, it's restricted cash, but but it's included in those numbers. And then we had on the total liability and deferred inflows, you can see we had 3 million 352 in 2015. This year we've got 5 million So that's the debt that goes with the cash. So it kind of, kind of washes it. It look, looks like it really went up, but at the end of the day, we, uh, a lot of that police station cash. Okay. Statement of activities. Uh, but the revenues in 2015 were 19,811,000, and this year they were 19,426,000. So we were off a little bit on the revenues, but on the good side, the expenditures were down from 20,156,000 to 18,054,000. So that that's a good thing. So change in net position in 2005, we were actually a negative 344,987. This year we we're a positive million four twenty-five three sixty-nine. Uh, one thing you see this 52.5 sitting there here in 2016, Anne Marie may, I'm sure y'all are aware of it, but we booked about four years worth of uh, impact fees because there's a court case going on, it's a possibility we may, we may have to pay some of that back. Uh, it could go back as much as 10 years, but we, we booked four years and kind of want to wait and see what goes on when the court, when the court flushes this thing through. So that's what the 52.5 is that you see in that restatement of net position. The prior year in 2015, the restatement was we had to implement the pension standard that law in 2006-15. So we got some restatements that are beyond our control, but but uh, anyway, that, that's what makes up those numbers there. Okay, just a pie chart of where the money came from. Uh, you see, our borrowing taxes account for 39% of our total re revenues. 23% uh, is unrestricted, which is lawful option sales tax and franchise tax for the most part. And then we have restricted money, 11%, which is power, power bill and any grants that we may have gotten. And then 24% is in sales and services. And of course, I don't talk about investment earnings because there's nothing to talk about. There isn't any hardly any more. <laughs> It used to be I could get up and say we made $100,000 in investment income, but I don't believe I've done that in about 10 years now. <laughs> but anyway, uh, governmental fund revenues, general fund rather, general fund revenues. Our final budget was $4,586,000. Uh, we ended up at $4,673,756. So we were ahead $87,601 in general fund uh, revenues versus the budget that we have for the year. Governmental fund expenditures, same kind of pie chart there. 14% makes up the general government. Public safety makes up the lion's share of that 46%, and that's pretty much in line with what we had last year, so that percentage hasn't really changed a whole lot. Environmental protection, that includes the garbage, and then you can see we got economic and physical development down there. And that's uh, actually only 4%, but that's just a pie chart of where we spent the money that we brought in. Another good graph here, the final budget on expenses was 4 million 949597 We ended up at 4,712,197, so we were really favorable against the budget, and you'll see that come through 
we had a gain in the general fund of about three hundred thousand dollars, and we had appropriated twenty-two thousand. Mm -hmm. And that's another slide that will show it source out in a minute. But you did an outstanding job of keeping the expenses under control and putting it and putting that money to the bottom line. General fund uh, fund balance. 34% is in states that are restricted by state statute. All that means is that's that local option sales tax and franchise tax that is in, had not been received at the end of June. It's come in now, but at the end of June we restrict that because if you can't appropriate it, it's, it's, uh, it's restricted. Powell Bill makes up 6% of that. The good news is the unassigned fund balance is 59%, so that's a good number. And we like, I like that number. Okay? Unassigned, unassigned fund balance, and I'm really not talking about that. Well, I think I came in here several years ago when the county had some issues with the fund balance. And we kind of set a goal, that I think, back then that we would try to get to 30%. Yeah. We've, we've gotten that now. And we said we keep uh, losing ground against the statewide average. <laughs> We're doing pretty good, though. I, I, I'm real pleased to see that unassigned fund balance. It tends to be the closer, the closer you are to the top of the scale, the lower the, the statewide average is. But we're in at 31.7. That was a nice improvement from 26.77 in the prior year. So again, everything went in the right, right direction. Proprietary revenue, not going to spend a lot of time talking about it, except to say that 98% of it is, comes, comes in and uh, charges for services, and that's electric fund and the water and sewer. And so uh, the other stuff is kind of small when you look at it, but that's the proprietary revenue piece of the pie right there. One thing, I, and, I, and we'll see it on the next slide, I think it's on the next slide, I'll talk about it there. Uh, actually, one more over, but that's okay, we'll do this one. But anyway, the expenditures, you can see the biggest share, 61%, is electric purchases, uh, which is no surprise to anybody. Water operations made up 5% and then 18% made up the electric uh, operations, the management, adding in, okay? Net position of governmental funds, you can just see both, both went the right direction. Governmental funds went up, the net position went up in the proprietary funds, so that's what we want to see. And, and, and both of them went in the right direction. Final budget was 22,445, and I told you earlier we didn't use any. We actually had, we actually had uh, 303,760,000 gain. So we were favorable 326 against what we said we were going to do. So again, great number. We went like we wanted to. Operating revenues, electric fund last year was 13,281. This year is 12,228. So we're down, but. Um, we expected that because of the power uh, for, that we did. And one of the other good things too, and we'll see it in the uh, expenses, uh, we're back on track now and the generator's up and running like it should be. So electric fund is back operating like it should be. We've got an operating income of 392000 in, in 2015, and 286 in 2016. So we were 894000 better. So again, that all was, went in the right direction. Okay. Water sewer fund, uh, million six forty one in the last year, uh, and revenues this year million six sixty seven. So we're up on, on that. I thought I had written that number down, but anyway, you can see we're up on the revenue side of the water sewer, and uh, and then when you look at the two thousand sixteen. Operating income with 238,762. We got 300 and some thousand dollars worth of depreciation in this. So that's if you take if you take the depreciation out, you actually had a had a positive compared to where we were. And again, you can see the restatement coming through on the water fund on these impact fees. Change in net position overall was uh, 2015 was 4 million 459,358. 2016, 180, 100, and then uh, so again we we improved in 2016 from where we had been.
airport fund, I don't know how we will ever get that profitable because we just don't have enough activity to cover the depreciation. And I thought I had written that number down, but I didn't. But anyway, uh, there's a depreciation in there on, on the airport funds. probably going to be a tough number to overcome. And it's just because it's a small airport, and, and as you know, anything spent at the airport is expensive. So anyway, uh, but anyhow, we'll, we'll look. We'll. We're better about a little bit than we were a year ago. So. Can I just um, point out, just to make sure everybody understands that in the under total operating expenses, it looks like you know we spent a heck of a lot more money than what the revenue came in. But remember the same thing as Jim pointed out in the water and sewer fund, that that 427,000 under operating that includes the de depreciation right. expense. So. That's a fairly large number. Jim, do you catch much havoc from uh, people in Raleigh over there? They'll probably put it in the letter because they do it every year. And uh, but I mean, I think they understand that this is a small town with a small airport. And uh, I don't think the airport gets many, uh, much county funding, does it? Not anymore. No. Zero. Yeah. Because I know in, in our county, we the, the towns and uh, get uh, get some funding. The airport gets funding from two counties that, that, that operate in that airport. And it's fairly significant numbers. So, you know, I, that's why I'm not optimistic that, that you're going to be able to fix that problem. We're working and talking with the county, and we're hoping that, you know, they're understanding the value, they acknowledge the value of the airport in terms of economic development. So we hope we'll get there. And I guess the other big thing in the airport is we, we're very fortunate with the funding from mm -hmm. the state that we get in grants, and that is, Infrastructure improvements, which where does that go, Jim? That goes on the balance, um, balance sheet, and that then that hurts us. That affects with depreciation. Yes, yes, so, yes. A sketch twenty-two. Yes, so. yes. Yeah, absolutely. But I guess I just want to point out so that the, the, I know the council understands it, but the viewing audience that we're not spending more than we're taking yeah. in. You know, where, where well, it's a service, and you know, part of part of providing the services to to the area because I think probably. Does Berkeley County have an airport? It's a Tri County. Tri County. Yeah, Northampton and oh, Berkeley okay. County. Okay. So you got a little bit of competition there. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and again, I'm, like I said, I'm not optimistic that you're going to have to turn that airport around completely. Cash balances. We can see the impact again in 256 in the cash balances of everything at June 30. 2015 was $1,902,000. Again, as I said earlier, we had two plus million dollars in cash it was uh, just sitting in as restricted so it's not available to spend except on the new police station but but that's that's why you see such a big jump in the cash balances at june 30th i was a little surprised with the way they did that because most time they don't advance you the whole money until you spend it and then the, and then you get a reimbursement but according to the uh what they did they put the, they put the whole amount of money in the bank so i was a little surprised with that we have to spend it and then get reimbursed. That's right, that's right. Okay, tax levy and collection 2015, the tax levy was a million six ninety four. 2016 was a million seven eighty eight. So that's a ninety four thousand dollar gain in the, in the tax tax levy. Uh, I just want to throw one cars collection rate, uh, if you look at 2015, was 98.85. 2016, it was 99.79 cash collection, I mean the cars collection rate. So we said we'd get close to 100, and I've got a couple of acts to do, but usually what happens is you got 60 days to change the tags if you, if you go in and you get, get a new car. So you really end up with a small amount of receivable some, sometimes for those, those cars that are done right at the end of the year. That new law has helped. Oh, tremendous. We probably were looking at numbers back in the 80% rule on cars mm -hmm. until they changed it. I mean, I, I remember we always used to say, tell, them, tell them it was the cars. And said, so years ago when I first started doing this stuff, they came and said, well, tell us what the car collection rate is and prove it. And so it, we did. And we found it was in the 80% on most of them because it's just, uh, you know, if you, don't, if you don't title it, you don't pay the property tax. You just let it sit there. But, uh, but that's fixed it. and now the levy is considered the levy when they come in and pay it so there's no lag time on it. So 
that was I think that was a great great move on the state's part to, to do that and really help. But this last year, uh, I think it was last year or the first year we did it. We had like 16 months in in the, in the uh, car cars because we were making that change, and so that was we got some extra revenues in that first year. But that's flat now. We're back to normal now. But that did happen about uh, I think they actually changed it in 2013. Yeah. So. But overall, I think the town had a good year, and uh, I, you know, keep up the good work. Uh, I appreciate all the help, Man Marie. Jennifer was new, and she's, uh, I'm sure she'll do a good job for us. And uh, she ran, I ran his enjoying his retirement. I went out and had dinner with him while we were here doing the audit. I think he was looking forward to his retirement. So. <laughs> I'm looking forward to mine too, but I can't do it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've got to keep my lifestyle up. <laughs> but I really do appreciate the opportunity to come in here and serve y'all and, and do y'all. Uh, I enjoy coming down here. It's, it's, it's fun. And, uh, you know, we've come a long ways. I think when we first started coming in here, before we got the internet portal, the client portal, we spent a week, week and a half down here. Now we get about 90% of that work is done before we ever get here that we do it in, in our office. and. Uh, and some certain things we just have to do on site. And so uh, it's really, really improved from where, where we used to be. And we've come a long ways, and I commend you for that. And I think the board has done a good job and, and, and the management here uh, of keeping the town moving in the right direction. Thank you, sir. Council members, does anybody have any questions of, of Jim or Anne Marie or anybody related with the. Uh, with the audit story that we were just presented. Yeah, I've, I've got a question I'd, I'd like to ask. I'm not so sure how to ask it, though. Okay. Uh, it's not um, asking for confidential information by any means, but uh, for a town of approximately 5,000 population, huh. how do we rack up with tax revenue? Is there any way... I mean, are, and I can't you, do you follow what I'm yeah, asking here? So that's probably if you go on the uh, on the state's website, there's some, there's some, uh, and it's under memos, and it compares the towns of similar size and tells you what the tax rate is, what the what the okay. collections are, and that kind of thing. I should have done that. I mean, uh, it's it's on the it's on the website for the LGC, and if you go on the memos, the municipal cash and investments report. And I'll add that information that I, I know what you're asking for. It's all on there. Maybe a lag time because the stuff from this year hadn't been posted yet. But, yeah, but, but you'll have a good, a good idea for, for how you stand up against the other towns. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Yeah. I'd say it's under memos on the local government commission's website. It would seem as though most of that would be determined on where. Which one? On where the municipality is. It is. It is. I mean, because land value is going to be the right. most dramatic change from right. one community to the other. We well, don't have a revival again. Uh, we're probably three years. Three years out. Three years, probably another five years. Five, five years. years, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that, uh, Bob, that'll give you an idea. You can go to that you. website. I appreciate that. Any other questions of Jim? Again, thank you, sir. You and your company, your team, you. well, we for the fine something. work you do. I, I'm glad we reached our goal in, on the reserve side. That's nice. Well, it seemed like a stretch at the time. You can't fix it overnight. But <laughs> the when I was in the industry, they would give us a budget every year for profit. They said, well, you got a little bit. Whatever you did this year, you got to do a little bit better next year. Right. <laughs> Mayor, can I ask Jim a quick question? Sure. Um, he's going to come in and meet <coughs> Jennifer I in the morning, but are there any regulations coming into effect for next year that will impact the audit? Any new regulations that... Yeah, uh, the, the kind of some of it started this year for people who were doing a comprehensive annual financial report, the law, law, law enforcement separation allowance, we were booking that already. But uh, for this year, they wanted us to get uh, the study done, the actual study done, to get that in the beginning li ending liability because going into next year, we're going to have to book all that stuff on, on the law enforcement separation allowance. So, 
Okay. We've done that. We've got our study. Yeah, you've got the study, and uh, and I'll I'll have to check on Anne Marie and see, but you may need to. You may want to do it, do the study. I updated. Updated, yeah. But right. that's the newest thing that's that's on the table right now. And there's some tax incentive things that I think that probably would be more applies more to the county, where you forgive taxes or give them a reduced rate over a number of years. And I think if that's going on, on the, uh, and I think it's only at the county level, you have to go in and tell tell us what that number is that you that you're doing. And the pension stuff, we 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 it's here to stay. So uh, last year we had a net pension asset you know, in the local government employee retirement fund. Well, don't worry, it's gone. We got we got a liability out there now. Overall, the whole system overall, we got a proportionate share. And it's in there if you look on the, uh, in the footnotes under the debt section, you can see what that number is. It's an enormous number for the state. Oh, it's huge, yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, I mean, it was a big net asset in the prior year, but, uh, but that, like I said, it's gone. Now, teachers and state employees retirement system never did get a pause in that. They, they're still, um, they were under war last year. <coughs> but. Made me wonder why Dale Falwell wanted that job. <laughs> Anyway, he's got it. Yeah. All right. Thanks. We all have a good holiday and you travel, travel safely, and uh, hope everybody has a healthy holiday. Thank you, sir, and the same to you and yours. You're quite uh, welcome. We'll we'll try to keep moving forward with uh, equal success in the coming year. There you go. Well, I all appreciate right. y'all letting us do it for you. Jim, if you see something, and and, and I, I I mean, you know, we just got it this past weekend, so. I'm sure none of us have had time to read the 200 and whatever pages that look to me. I don't know, but uh, um, if if you see something in there that you think we need to kind of work on or tweak or whatever in our budget okay. uh, before we start budget negotiations sometime in February or March, uh, give us a holler. Okay, I'm glad to do that. Yeah, I mean, and you might have some footnotes in there that I hadn't read. And I'll, I'll admit that's I didn't budget, read it all. Yeah, that's budget to actual schedules. I think in the front part of the is Exhibit 4 or Exhibit 5 gives you the budget amount and how you ended up. And then if you go back into the back part of the statements, uh, it gives you a little bit more detail on, on that. Uh, and actually in the front part of the statements, it shows the budget, the original budget, and then it shows the final budget. So you kind of see how you, how you stacked up, you know, if you had to amend the budget. Um, and most, but most of us do. I mean, it's very it's rare that you don't that, oh, yeah. that, that doesn't come out right. So, but I mean, like retirements and you know stuff like that that we've got to continue on, you know, funding. Yeah. Um, but if there's something else in there that relates to that or, or something right now, like that, most people aren't funding it. But they would they they're making us book that number and say, here's what it would be if you had to pay this number, pay this money out. And I think that's a good thing. Yeah, because it'll scare you to death. In well, most cases. I read something this this past week on it, and they said that they had looked at the pensions as, you know, overall for the country. So it's oh, worse off than we thought it was. And so oh, it's, sure. it's going the yeah. wrong direction. It's it's not headed in the right direction. Been unfunded since the beginning of time. Yeah. Also, while you're in your travels, if you run into anybody who wants to buy an airport, give us a shout <laughs> on that. <laughs> Anybody want to buy an accounting practice? <laughs> I got a couple other clients got Air Force and they don't make any money either. <laughs> I feel better. But if they if they eventually do, let us know to see. <laughs> let us know what we did right. <laughs> That's another comparison. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, well thank, thank you again. All right. Well. And, I, and I'll see you and Jennifer okay. in the morning. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Y'all hit the lights in the back, please. Oh, you going to do another? Oh, okay. Never mind. Sorry about that. Yeah, the night you get to stay in the dark a little bit. All right. Um, Anne-Marie... I'm going to ask if you would uh, monitor the second presentation, and I'm going to ask Councilman Stallings if he would take my seat. 
I have a conflict. Uh, oh, that's right. Can tonight. you turn the light on so the mayor can see? No, I, I can see. I'm fine. I have a conflict tonight that I need to excuse myself to attend. And uh, anyway, from me to you, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And thank you for uh, covering for me. As the evening went on, we had more and more rushing water come through the fire station. 
you can see this is about a three hour difference from where you saw the video with water halfway up the driveway and now water is rushing through the building um, in the back of the building um, it got up you just can't make out the water line right there this is about how high it got in the building total in the back um, in the bedrooms uh, got up to the beds um, throughout the living quarters and here is the information if anybody needs any information on the uh, disaster relief those things are still valid until the first of the year um, you can visit the North Carolina Department of Public Safety they have some information the Department of Agriculture has some information the Small Business Administration has some and then there are different federal agencies for disaster assistance so that was a very quick run through of the calls we responded to and to give you some visualization of what we were working in while we did what we came back to um, today we've got the station clean we've got the carpet replaced we've got the fixtures torn out um, we are not quite to the point of putting them back yet um, but we've got everything sanitized and clean so that people are back in the station the guys are living in the station working in the station we're on the road to recovery well thank you chief that was very informative and we all heard some mighty good reports coming from the fire department and how you guys uh, rescued the people and all that <coughs> everything went well and we're very grateful to you yes. Mayor Pro Tem, if I may, one of the things that we're doing as a result of, um, you know, dissecting the, the response that the fire department um, made as well as the police department and, and the other departments, we're looking at resources and equipment and technology. You know, what can we do differently? What, what equipment might help us in the future respond in a more uh, safe manner you know what if we had to do more evacuations than what we had we were using a fire truck to help with evacuations and so we're looking at um, military surplus equipment and i have always resisted um, the requests from department heads over the years over the many years you know to get a humvee or let's get a big um, carrier truck but after talking with um, fire chief and you know really listening and hearing and seeing and, and even talking to I went to the, the um, public safety center the next morning and got a chance to talk to some of the residents who had been evacuated and what how difficult it was for them on top of having to leave their home being afraid and then for them trying to be able to with help climb up onto a fire truck. Um, and we saw some resources that other communities use, so we're gonna put together a list um, of some equipment that we think would be beneficial for us to have if we can get it at no cost um, through the military and present that to you hopefully in January or February so you can look at it and see if you think it's um, appropriate. Hopefully you will. Um, we're also um, working with FEMA. Um, they were here yesterday. They spent several hours with Jennifer and I and the department heads had met with them previously on some mitigation projects. You know, some things that we can do to our facilities and our infrastructure to help minimize um, future flooding impact. Um, and then I also want to just sort of dovetail um, onto and give a little mini report or it's actually a sort of a a status report of um, what we're doing thanks to um, Stephen Horvath being online, um, being on board with us now in terms of um, <coughs> seeing the impact of Matthew. I told Stephen, I said, you're going to get to see it tonight. You're going to get to see some of the video. Um, Emory, while you're pulling that up, let me let me tell you. I, sometimes you, you you get what you pay for, uh, and if you pay nothing for something, a lot of times that's what it's worth. But through 
And, and the only reason I know this is we have bought some stuff over in uh, in Bertie County through um, the the military. And and I mean it's amazing what you really can get for little of nothing. I mean I we bought a I don't know how big the truck is. It's huge. I mean it can carry a lot of people. And I think we ended up paying like. Uh, Twenty-five, twenty-eight hundred dollars for it. I mean, it was very, very inexpensive. But you know, if you if you don't go and just grab the first thing you get, if you wait around a little bit, you can get something that um, maybe the National Guard uh, has a um, repair center in Windsor. You might can get something that now they can still get parts for. Um, so, you know, there's little things to it that you, you need to look at just versus, hey, that's a good looking truck and it's free, let's, let's get it. You, you know, it might be something they would tell you over there, hey, we, we can't get parts for that anymore. Or, if you do get parts, it'll be so expensive, you know, your value wasn't very good. And, and one thing I think we need to look at too is um, she's going to through the Bertie County two hurricanes and then when we had the um, incident at Nixon's, Leon Nixon's, mm -hmm. and he was incident command, uh, we needed to, he, he can't be operating out of a, 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 a regular car. Oh, good you know, morning. We need to get him um, a vehicle that he can um, operate with <coughs> all his technology, all of his communication equipment, and be able to go places that um, a regular um, Ford Crown Vic can't go. So we'll be looking at that too. Um just wanted to let you know where we are. We're um, gathering and we're I guess we're in the still in the phase of gathering information, doing assessments on the impacts um, our infrastructure after Hurricane Matthew. Um, Stephen is working up a plan to inspect storm drain and culverts and pipes. I can tell you we have already found um, a few pipes where there have been some partial collapses. Um, we identified um, a few catch basins um, that need to be cleaned out. One is we're still looking at it. We're not sure if it's out of service or not on, on North Broad Street. but. And some of that is DOT's infrastructure, but we're going to go ahead and inspect it as if it was our own and get a, um, a, a comprehensive report making sure that all that stuff is working accurately. Um, we met with FEMA about, um, as I said earlier, some mitigation proposals in terms of maybe increasing the size of culverts or increasing the number of culverts. Um, but we'll have to do a, a pretty comprehensive study because if we increase, if we add a culvert, say for instance, on Hicks Street under Filbert's Creek, you know, what is, more water can go that way, but then what is the impact going to be on the property downstream? So Stephen assures me he can do all those calculations and um, help us, um, you know, evaluate um, impacts of improvements and making sure that you're not just going to cause a problem downstream. Um, we've talked with soil and water conservation, and our friend um, Scott Alon, he's such a wealth of knowledge in terms of drainage. And so we're going to um, try to get him to, I know he will, will help us. He's already helped me um, with some assessment on Peanut Drive because we had flooding in a building that had not flooded before on Peanut Drive. Um, DOT has been great. They sent us copies of elevation maps. And we're also working with um, a great tool that I told you about a couple weeks ago. Um, North Carolina um, just instituted um, flood inundation maps. So we'll be able to look at the, the storm surge from the sound and, and the bay and how far up that went and um, how that impacted what was um, trying to, the stormwater runoff that was trying to drain to the south. And then the new um, flood insurance map. So we'll be looking at all that. But I did want to um, show you, this is an elevation map that DOT sent us. They have recently done elevations of um, all of the um, towns in the, in the division, I believe. And the areas in blue is low-lying areas. And you can see the really dark blue. Those are the um, tributaries. Those are that's uh, on, the, on the left or on the 
um, west side is um, Filberts Creek. You can see the remnants of Filberts Creek. And then on the right is fingers of Queen Anne's Creek. But it was interesting, DOT circled, you can see in the middle near the high school, a little shade of blue. And that area in front of the high school is, is lower. So that kind of makes sense that um, if we were going to have flooding, you know, but we want to make sure that everything was, was, is clear in that area, but that area is a little bit lower um, than what is, what is around there. And DOT recommended, I don't have a, um, a pointer, I don't know if you can see up near um, Filbert's Creek, there are two circles and the, there are two areas where they are suggesting we study um, increasing the size of culverts. And one of them is on West um, Hicks Street that I mentioned to you um, under Filbert's Creek and then to the north on Granville Street where um, the Ag Center is. There's a large culvert that runs under Granville Street and feeds into um, Gilbert's Creek Ditch. So, as Stephen is learning his way around town and learning all of our streets and, and infrastructure, um, I, he and I have set a goal. You know, we want to be able to give you a really good report. I don't think it'll be a final report, but tell you what our findings are by the end of January. Um, and I think with assistance from the agencies that I mentioned, you know, we'll be able to um, give you a good a good assessment. Drainage and personnel, my two favorite subjects. So. <laughs> All right, thank you, Anne Marie. Okay. All right, we'll continue with our program here, and we'll uh, go to a committee report, uh, an administrative committee, and I believe that's you, Steve. Mm -hmm. And we only have one item on the agenda tonight. Uh, it is recommended that council approve the deer extract program for wastewater treatment plant that has been presented as y'all remember the other night when we talked about it there's more deer than we care to think that are out at the water treatment plant and this uh, will help uh, eliminate some using the same program that we've used at the uh, airport for years and it's seemed like it's worked well out there and I put that in the form of a motion. No second. I have a motion and a second. All those approved, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, like sign. Okay. Motion carried. That's it. Thank you. Okay. All right. On a new business, we have a grant agreement with the North Carolina's Crime Governor's Crime Commission. You want to take that? Down? Sure. Um, we're really excited. The police department um, worked on this grant application, and we recently. <coughs> Um, received word from the Governor's Crime Commission that our grant in the amount of $23,820 had been approved. Um, the grant would purchase and install a repeater, a radio repeater, on our West Freemason Street Tower. And it will give um, increased and better radi <coughs> radio communication in all areas of town. I didn't realize we had some dead areas. Um, we do. We, I, don't, I don't know that we call them completely dead, but there are some areas, especially in, if you're downtown in a building where sometimes it's, it doesn't work. So that's a real safety concern. Um, and this will um, also integrate with the um, 800 megahertz system that is um, set up with our current radios and integrates with Highway Patrol and everybody. So. So we're excited about um, a $23,000 grant for that. So that, that's a done deal? If you approve it, it will be, okay. yes. Okay, we, you need a motion to approve it, okay. So second. 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 Okay, we've got a motion to second. All those approved. Sorry about aye. that. No problem. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Disapprove? Yeah. We were, we were communicating with oh. <laughs> <laughs> Those opposed, but like sign? Okay, motion carried. And the annual farmer's roster, you can do that? Or I Chief will. Can do it? Um, I will, and if I need him to um, back backstop for me, he will. But this, you've seen this um, roster, or not this exact roster, but every year, this time of year, um, the council is asked to certify the membership of the roster, and that is used, that is sent to the North Carolina Department of Insurance 
um, and so we ask that you, you approve the roster or certify the roster as prepared. You need a motion on that? Yes, sir. Yes. I so move. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Clarification. Did, and, and God rest his soul because I thought the world of him. We, we go a year in arrears, sir. A year in arrears, so that's the reason Bell was on it. Thank yes, you. Okay, thank you. The answer is that. Okay. Um, you're, you're certified to serve for the past year. Okay. And since he was alive during the first portion of the year, he paid money for next year's Thank you much. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those approved, say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All those opposed? Motion carried. And next is the Fireman's Relief Fund appointment. And speaking of our dear late friend Melvin Lane, um, Melvin served on the um, Fireman's Relief Fund board, and with his passing, there is a vacancy on that board, and the um, Membership um, is appointed by different um, categories. For instance, Jennifer Baldwin serves by virtue of her position as being the finance officer. The town council and the county commissioners um, get to appoint members. And um, Melvin's seat is appointed by the council. And so we have um, two options for you. One would be um, Randy Jordan, now that he's no longer the finance officer, um, but is familiar with the, how the um, fund operates. Um, you could consider appointing him, or um, Gary Swanner, who is a retired um, fireman, also is willing to serve, <coughs> yes, if, if council um, wanted to appoint him. So it's, it's your choice. They're both Gary fine gentlemen. The, he was on the fire department for a long time, and I'm, I'm sure he knows what needs to be done there. So. Yeah, and we might be able to get him to bring back his fire truck. <laughs> <laughs> he does have, yeah. Is that a motion? That's a motion. <laughs> I'll second that. Okay, we got a motion and a second. All those who are in favor of putting Gary Swanner in that position, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion to carry. Okay, the next item is uh, items considered timely important. Does any of you have uh, up here have anything that you have a burning desire to share with the rest of the council? Um, I know the mayor talked about the ACEs, but I don't think he slipped in. There's going to be a pep rally, community pep rally, Friday night, Friday afternoon, 5.30, front of the high school. Um, put the word out. Anyone that you have on your social media that is former uh, Eatontonians that have moved away, if they live close to Winston-Salem, those that don't know by now, make sure they know that we're going to be playing at 7.05. Um, you know, I mean, any, anybody that you can tell that lives in Charlotte or wherever. My daughter lives in Charlotte. She's playing on go. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so spread the word the best you can. We, uh, we pack the stadium in South Columbus last week and it was 257 miles one way and we had about as many as they had. Wow. So that's great. Yeah. Wonderful. Really great. And I just mentioned, did I hear that they're having a send off? They want people to That's correct too. At 1045, 1045 line up Broad Street from the high school to West mm on down West Queen Street to... That, that was a real funny uh, situation. I was at the Barker House, and uh, a couple came in. Uh, they were visiting from Virginia, and they said, how do all the kids get out of school in the middle of the week like this? <laughs> explained to them and they were all carried away you know and they said i've never seen so many people on the street <laughs> this place is packed out there we couldn't go anywhere it was a nice show in the part of the town does anybody else have anything to bring up Board group? okay in that case uh it's not time for public comments anybody in the audience have anything they want to bring up <laughs> If not, that concludes our um, show tonight. And uh, <laughs> I move we adjourn. Amen. We got a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. <laughs> we'll adjourn. <laughs>